they was an old time wrestler and a lot of fans listening to this, they may know who I'm talking about. His name was Johnny Valentine. He would put you to sleep sometimes. And it took his match 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get rolling. But that's when wrestling fans would sit out there like this and watch you. They'd watch every move. They'd watch your eyes. They'd watch your hands. And it was very slow going. And when he hit somebody, the whole arena heard it because he came with those big forearms right across the chest. Him and Wahoo McDaniel and Flair, they were known for literally beating the crap out of each other. Valentine was a big guy. He's about 6'5". He's about 250, 260 maybe. And him, and him and Wahoo would go in there. And I swear, when the match was over, after about 40 minutes, 40 minutes was actually a short match for him. He'd always go after 40 minutes. I don't care. He was, he might be in a little B town. See, I grew up in the Carolina. So a B town would be Anderson, South Carolina. He'd go there and do 40 minutes for this crowd. Well, the crowd appreciated it because they weren't used to these main event style matches like Valentine. And when I say main event, he gave a main event match every night because his style did not change. He always paced himself. And he always had a saying, people might think wrestling's fake, but they'll know one thing, I'm not. Which was great for him. And Johnny Valentine, when you left that arena, you said, damn. They literally beat the crap out of each other. And Wahoo, Wahoo wasn't shy with those chops either. He would light Valentine up, and when he left, he'd have all those marks across his chest. So would Wahoo. But that's the way they wanted it because they, basically they knew that nobody else in the, in the company could take it from Valentine. Wahoo said, I can take it. And he took it. And what great matches they had. And Flair, I think he was uh, – George Scott got him. He was the booker. George Scott and, – and Flair was watching all this. He was sitting back, going to school – by working in the company and watching these two masters in the ring. Now, when you want to know a master back in those days, you looked at who left from each territory to get booked in St. Louis. St. Louis was what I call an outs, an outlier. St. Louis didn't really have a territory, but he would take from Texas. He would book from guys from Texas and he'd book guys from the Carolinas, guys from Florida, guys from Minnesota. So what you were seeing in St. Louis every two weeks was an all-star team like Bruiser Brody, Wahoo, those type guys, Abdullah, and which I, I, I like that kind of booking because you're not, you're not constricted. You really could get what you wanted, but the Valentine was a favorite of theirs and I don't even know what I started off talking about, but they had great matches. They paced themselves. And, and the thing about Wahoo and uh, uh, Valentine, they drew money. They sold tickets, which back in the old days is what you had to go on. We didn't have social media. We didn't have TV contracts. We didn't sell merchandise. The only way you can make money is to sell those tickets. And they sold a lot of them. <laughs> 